Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here and to speak here. And a bit of background about me. I go to POB JFK High School. <laughs> um, I moved to the US seven years ago from Israel. And over the years, yes, I've done things. But an event that stood out to me is last year when I did a fall internship. And I campaigned for a representative. And the campaign I campaigned for became a national and a name you probably know. Uh, we lost to George Santos. <laughs> and for anybody who, who lives on the rock, George Santos <laughs> is a representative who lied about many things. And I feel like it's been forgotten, but he also lied about being the grandchild of Holocaust survivors and being Jewish. And this is the third most Jewish district in the United States. So take, take. So I had already said, good, said my goodbyes for the night, peeking at the live news stream projected on the back wall for the last time. I ran out of the Holiday Inn event hall and joined my dad in the car. Usually, if he picked me up from shifts, we talk about all the incidents I had, whether it be the conversations I had from the doorbells, um, the dogs that once chased me, or the rude comments that people had that were honestly more funny than insulting. However, that night, that was election night, I couldn't think of anything to say, and that car ride was silent. My dad broke the silence and he said, how are we doing? Six points behind, but we'll catch up. The next morning, with 97% of the votes in, which is basically official, we did not catch up, and the Robert Zimmerman campaign lost to George Santos. Now, flashback. Moving, back to, moving to the United States from Israel in sixth grade, I was, quick, I was quickly drawn to advocacy. When I heard conversations about systemic racism, I wanted to do something. And in eighth grade, I joined a Long Island organization called the Race Racism. And with this organization, I worked towards racial equity on Long Island, which is one of the most racially segregated regions in the United States. Through this organization, I, um, I spoke at Columbia, uh, at the teacher's college there, about racial equity and how to teach in classroom student-centered content. I was furious that concepts such as redlining weren't being discussed in schools. How is this swept under the rug? Um, and this followed me to high school. And throughout all middle school and high school, whether it be my advocacy, extracurricular, or co-curricular activities, my Jewish identity guided me. I took part in projects, including leading a forum for educators at the Columbia Teachers College, or starting an annual Holocaust remembrance event in my district, always with the values of, of the community I came from. What originally was a fun and meaningful for fall internship last year became a personal insult. After spending countless hours in weekday and weekend shifts, even missing school, my campaign lost to a fraudster. Not just a fraudster, somebody who used my identity. In my junior year, when I lost to Santos, I encountered the most anti-Semitic remarks since I moved before this year. For that year's now annual Holocaust Remembrance event, I felt it was imperative to include an, a component to educate students and families about the current rise of anti-Semitism in New York. When I introduced this idea, anti-Semitism was reluctant and refused to consider this subject for it being sensitive. However, I continued to push this and to include it because I felt this event wouldn't make sense without it. I believe the Holocaust should not be treated as an isolated event in the past as anti-Semitism didn't end when the Holocaust ended. As a result of leading this event, I was invited to participate as a student leader at the Nassau County Anti-Semitism Committee's public hearing with local legislators and Jewish leaders. I explained what I thought education was lacking, connecting the Holocaust, which seems distant to many students, to the current issues and rising anti-Semitism. To approach, thank you. To approach this problem, I propose that students learn the actual IHRA working definition of anti-Semitism. 
I argued that whatever students learn in history class is of no practical use unless they can apply it in their daily lives. Instead of taking this loss to heart, advocating for change, helping process this nuisance in a way that helped me make a positive impact. Weeks of anger over the Santos loss were transformed into weeks of advocating to local officials. I learned that working with members of my community and focusing on the bigger picture is meaningful to me. And now, before the school year could even begin, in October, I woke up to the unim unimaginable horror of that Simchat Torah Saturday. Thankfully, my close family was safe. But I lost family members who were murdered or taken hostage. And once I returned to school on Monday, I thought it was imperative for the school to better address Jewish students and to focus at that time on the grieving that Jewish students had. As soon as I heard the announcement, some of you may have heard over the intercom, I left my classroom for the main office to share with administration officials what students are dealing with. After discussions and meetings, school communication and actions improved and became more responsive, directly addressing anti-Semitism when it occurred. Anti-Semitism continues to rise and I don't intend to stop fighting it and do my part in improving the situation for myself and others. And I think something that's really important when we talk about anti-Semitism and all types of hate is that we address them specifically. When we see generalizations, anti-Semitism being discussed as prejudice or other bigotry being discussed as simply general prejudice, that's not the case. We need to address what comes in the context that it comes and with that context to address it properly and thoroughly. Thank you very much. <laughs>